Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. This time looking at what is known as the Gary Kludge Fix. It was Jan Beter's video that's just prompted me to actually take a look at this. I've been into it for a while, but I thought, well, actually, now is a good time. Um, and it was after seeing his video there on a uh, Ref3 A500. There's been a few of those repaired on my channel. There'll be a link uh, top right, uh, and then in a minute or two later, another link top right. And I'll show you one of those boards in a minute. I think what I'm going to do is do the mod that's been done to this board already to that board. But I thought it would be useful to cover it because searching high and low on the internet, I can see references to a transistor kludge, in quotes, but no explanation of what is actually required. And we'll talk a little bit more towards the back end of the video about how it works, or perhaps draw a schematic or something, but I believe it's this transistor here. I'll stick a photo here of the Twitter post that's just reminded me of uh, the issue there, because on that Twitter post he was like, oh, it looks like you've got the transistor clutch there for the Gary. And I was like, hmm, I'm interested by that, but how does he know it's for Gary? I think he's mistaken. But actually, in retrospect, looking at my other Rev5 board, it doesn't have this transistor. This is a Rev5. Amiga 500 board here, so it's got to be this transistor. So I figure, let's have a look, I think it's a 2N3906 or something, and from what I understand, uh, and this was uh, thanks to this person up here, he said it's a, a, a problem with the DTAC, Data Transfer Acknowledge, and if you saw the previous 2000 video I had with the 536 was having some sound issues, speed issues, it's the same sort of problems, when you get problems with the uh, Data Transfer Acknowledge pin, things have to wait, things have to wait, and I think the issue here is the blitzer in the Agnes can't do a blitter operation when something's uh, going on with Gary. Presumably when it's reading from the floppy drive, there's some sort of delay there. And that delay translates into, as I'll show you in a minute, the game June is one of the examples. There's probably loads of other software that have similar sorts of issues. Rainbow Islands, I think, was one of the earliest reported games that wouldn't even work on it. Um, this particular old Gary, and I'll show you this up close in a sec. It's the old, original Gary chip, and I think 50,000 or so of these were produced before they realised there was an issue. So yeah, this person up here, I'll talk about that later on, is the person that identified uh, this fix, actually. So I'm guessing it's going to be doing something with the DTAC line. So I'll show you how June should work at the start here, and then we'll take that chip out, and I'll put it into an unmodified board, one that doesn't contain that transistor clutch fix, and we should get the issue. I'm surprised actually because you know what, through all my testimony, I never realised that when that Gary was on this board, it worked okay. If I'd noticed that, then I would have been able to look at this fix earlier. And you know what, if I'd taken the Twitter post seriously, I could have looked at it even sooner. Um, I just thought that there's no way it's, that transistor there is related to the fix, but I'm sure it is. Yeah, so if you just listen to the music here, its tempo doesn't really change. That bit in particular, I think you will notice once we get the uh, the other Gary um, into the other board. Right, so let's get the wrist strap uh, on, if I can, without twisting it too much. And let's just uh, carefully uh, lever Gary out. Yeah, I don't have a dip extractor that's good enough for these longer chips, to be honest, so it's prizing very carefully is often the best way. A flat blade is better. If you use a round point or thing like that, you'll get little like gouges in the edge of the socket there where it's, you know, you've frequently levered. Yeah, just alternate one side uh, and the other. Chips have been in and out of this board, so yeah, it's actually okay. Sometimes you get like a mark there. It's not too bad, that one. Yeah, so I've got the wrist strap on. You can see there it's marked CBM and then 5719. But then it's got this Toshiba part number here, TC, and then a, a long number. So, yeah, this is the buggy Gary, but it was working fine on that Rev 5. So let's now stick it in a Rev 3 board. Whilst Amir will clean these boards, because... I don't know if you can see look how much <laughs> dust is on them. They've uh, obviously been in the conservatory when we were working in there for such a long period of time. And they weren't in bags at the time. We've got ESD bags for all these boards now. So yeah, this board will be cleaned up. Let's just uh, yeah, pin one to the right, get that Gary in there. Yeah, so very dusty, look at this. Uh, yeah, it's marked S&P, okay. Tested everything out, serial power, okay. Repaired 2019, this one. Came from Stefan. Huge thanks, Stefan. 
Yeah, just adding half a meg of uh, slow run to this. It's got an 8371 uh, uh, Agnes, so let's just see if that boosts. Now, this may have Kickstart 1.2, so you know what? I might need to swap the um, Kickstart ROM out in a minute. I don't know. What I'd like to do though, is try and get this old uh, uh, Gary, this, you know, we're testing it here, but get this old Gary working in this board and leave it in this board because it, it would have been on a Rev 3, although some of them did ship on the Rev 5, hence how my Rev 5 board's got that mod already. But if we listen now, I am guessing, unless this has had the clutch fixed onto it and I can't see it. Then it should have some tempo issues. some speed issues there and as I say it's something to do with blitzing it's like Agnes is trying to do a blit and there's some delay there's a bottleneck it's having to wait yeah uh, because of that data transfer knowledge signal so anyway I think the next thing I'll do is have a little bit of a measure around on the other board and try and just work out where the pins of that transistor are going and I figure I may as well show you this whilst we're doing it so this is the transistor here yeah, and it's just like, it's soldered to a couple of points, isn't it, with two legs, and then we've got a wire coming off going to here. So my guess is, one of these is going to, because this one here is on this side of the board rather than there, I think this is going to be DTAC. So if we probe from there, DTAC from memory is pin 10. And I know that because we recently did that at 2000 fix. So one, two, three, ten. There we go. Dead short, zero, zero, zero. So that first wire is going to DTAC. Um, I need to get the pin out of this next. 2 and 3, 9 of 6. Yeah, so I'll work out which pin that is. Mm, probably the emitter, I think. I, I guess, I don't know, it might not be. Um, and then I just need to work out where the other two pins go. So uh, the first one here is that looks like it's going to be a main rail. It looks like ground or 5 volts. It's ground. Yeah. So the pin down here is ground. And I'm guessing the other pin, which I can't quite see where that's going. I think it might be this uh, pad here is probably going to be going to Gary is it? Just widen the shots slightly there just so you can see that I'm uh, just having a probe over here where Gary is. I mean obviously I could just, oh, hang on it is there, yeah it's Gary, <laughs> there we go. So it's one, two, three, four. I'll work out what that is, stick it up top left. Um, assuming it is going there, it looks like it is because there's a piece of tape or something under that and it looks like it's going to this way here. And I think that's it. There's no resistors or anything around there. So I've got the left probe on pin 10, DTAC there. And just probing some of these phases around here. Hopefully we may find DTAC somewhere. There, hang on. Yeah, there's that top one. So there's four pads there in the shape of a diamond. The top one nearest this chip here is DTAC. Uh, so let's see if we've got ground, so hang on a minute, yeah the grounds are weird on these. So you can see ground pad here normally, you'll be able to join from, test from there to say ground on a chip. Oh yeah, I've got to join there. Sometimes you don't, some of the grounds, certainly the ones down the bottom are isolated on these. So just be mindful of that, if you're thinking that's a ground, it might not be. So you know, in that case they're just testing to a 74 c as we can see, it is. So if we just uh, test around here, is that a ground? Yeah, so we've got ground. We've got DTAC, we just now need to find a connection to pin 21 of Gary, it's that 4 from top, uh, wasn't it? So let's, uh, I've got the right probe on the Gary pin there, let's just have a probe around here, we might find it somewhere. Any of these fires? Hey, there it is. So, yeah, that's the connection to Gary. Yeah, so the wire's not going to be very long, is it? The other two can almost be just done with the legs and then just need one wire to there. Yeah, so the board does need to clean, but I'm just going to just clean up around here, around the area we are uh, soldering. Right, that's a little bit cleaner around the area we are working in. 
Right, so I've kind of eyed this up. I'll show you how I intend to mount this. Pin one here is DTAC. That's going to be ground, and the wire, uh, the middle pin bent up, is the the wire that goes to Gary. Pin twenty one, ramen. So because the top of that diamond there is DTAC, we can literally. Uh, I'm just going to just sit it in the position at the moment. I'm going to just sit it more or less like that. Yeah, sort of in that position, like that there. Well, there's nothing for those wires to short onto, it'll be fine. And then here, this top one, we'll just uh, join uh, a wire to that with a bit of heat shrink and have it across over here, I think it was, wasn't it? I forget what it was now, I think it was that centre point. All right, we are almost there. I've got a piece of black heat shrink tube in here. I'm just going to cut this leg down a little bit. He doesn't need to be quite so long. There we go. The other two points are soldered on. Let's just uh, add a little bit of solder to the middle pin. There we go. We'll just uh, tin this wire. I'm going with black wire just to make it look as near as possible to the original mod that would have been done by Commodore or uh, Commodore approved uh, technician. Yeah, just try and get a reasonably large blob like that and then just test it. That's on. Let's get the piece of heat shrink tubing over there like that yeah and this this now once that's shrunk it can just be bent a little bit here this way perhaps and rooted around to the point here let's just test that on connectivity just make sure i'm not going crazy so i'm testing on pin 21 again uh, i think it was that one wasn't it just make sure it's zero 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 it is you know you, you may find on some of these connections you get a low resistance but not a dead short so yeah I'll cut it about there I think just twist the uh, wires together there tin up and we are pretty much done so yeah super simple to apply this mod to Rev 3 I mean you saw where it was on the Rev 5 I think we'll just cut that back yeah we don't need it to be very long at all it's just going onto a tiny via solder point there so yeah I'll just get a wee bit more solder here because I want it to be a little beady sort of connection and we'll just push it into position and we'll just push it into position in theory you could push it into the via if you wanted to but that will do that's going to be fine the final thing now is to shrink that bit of heat shrink but just before we do that I'd like to just make sure we're not doing anything strange with the D-tag and when I say strange I mean like shorting it to ground for example 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so it's not grounded um, let's just test the first pin so that's correct the pin on there the pin on the right side should be ground which it is I said the right side, I mean the left side. And the middle pin, obviously, is going up there, so that's correct. So let's try that again with Krusty Gary. All we have done is add that transistor, nothing else. So will the music stay sort of a regular uh, tempo, or will it go crazy still? So, I place your bets. Do you think this is going to work? Well, it's not gone up in smoke yet. It is booting. Yeah, sorry about the noise. The insulation here is making a bit of a racket in the background. Anyway, I've got a good feeling about this. I think this is going to work. Yeah, so I pushed this video out fairly quick after Jan's video, actually, just to sail on his success. Sorry, I mean, just to follow on, and uh, hopefully <laughs> Jan might be able to apply this mod to his Rev3 board there. But he might not want to do it, because that board, if you saw it, is untouched. So maybe if it needs the mod, maybe just leave it as is. No issues, it's fixed. That's it. Fantastic. Well, there we go. So, knowledge perhaps once lost. I haven't seen it on a website anywhere, but it's, uh, you know, we're not really discovering anything new here. We're just covering some stuff that perhaps hasn't been very well documented. So, there we go, fixed. So simple. 
hard to believe. I actually thought that the silicon, you know, the bug was so boxed that you wouldn't even be able to fix it with a mod like that. It would need something a bit more extensive, but yeah, seemingly not. It is just that uh, problem with the DTAC. And what this is doing, I think, is just pulling it low. I think that's it. It's just uh, helping pull it low. It probably wasn't pulled low hard enough. So just using um, uh, hot air here to shrink that tubing down just over. In fact, it's 100 degrees there. That's perhaps not enough. Let's just bump it up a wee bit. It shrinks more when you've got, I don't know, about 130, 140 degrees ish. Just trying to get in at different angles here. You could put a piece of captain tape under that, a bit like Commodore did. Right, that'll do, I think. So, pin 45 on Gary, as you can see, is DKWDB. It is a floppy connection. So, whenever that signal changes, what I think should be happening is it should be asserting the DTAC. You know, DTAC should go low. And uh, that's the problem. So, whilst Gary has a DTAC connection, it, the bug was, you know, forgetting that it needed to change DTAC when uh, that signal has some activity on it. Yeah, so my head's still sore from the uh, face palm. Adding this bit in at the end, the helpful comments from this chap here, I completely missed. The chip is upside down compared to what I was thinking of in terms of where pin 1 was. So it's like pin 21, I think he said it was, which is uh, the ROM output enable, I think, because Gary does the address decoding for the uh, kickstart ROM there. So it's not related to the floppy side of things at all which is even more interesting and more confusing to me. But the thing that I mentioned, uh, you know, a few minutes ago in this video, I haven't cut it out, about the blitzer, that's true as of the person that originally um, came up with a mod. Um, you know, the way it was explained is there is a problem with blitting. Um, I don't know how, in terms of the ROM side of things, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me at all. But yeah, so it seems to be on the ROM output enable, and it's pin 21, not pin 45. So I'll show you the basic schematic for this. Yeah, so there we go. Other than needing the clean up, which I will do off camera because there's hairs and dust all over this, uh, we are completed, I think. So could this wire be rooted a bit better? Yeah, probably. I mean, you could hot melt glue it down or something, a bit like they did with that one there. That cable isn't going anywhere, is it? And the transistor can't do anything. It's overlapping this wire here, so there's nothing for it to short to. So you know what? That's okay. I think it's things stand. So yeah, huge thanks to Jan Beta for just reminding me I need to look at this <laughs> and I need to clean it up. Yeah, if you uh, liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd uh, like to support the channel, please see the coffee and Patreon links down below. You can also join us a YouTube member, and we've got some merch. Uh, that I will catch up with the MSX Part 2 and various other things. It's just been full of cold and COVID over the, 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 the winter period here. So, yeah, just trying to uh, catch up and recover at the moment. Um, but, yeah, hope you found the video interesting. I'll catch you in the next video.